Hello, good morning. We have 13 guests in now chat room. Uh, my name is May. I'm very glad to have this opportunity to share something that has changed my life. That is mindful breathing and meditation. We have done this morning session about six, seven hours ago. So this session to close our conference, I would like to bring the morning session back since most of you were not in the chat room. And then I will add more for you to learn to close. Mindful breathing is very, very powerful tool that you learn to observe from inside, from inward, instead of fight about the outside, stress about the outside world. So as global leaders here, 400 of us, I highly encourage you to share this link through LinkedIn or other communities. Invite all our global leaders to join us. Better leaders create a better world. And we will start in about just one or two minutes. We will start a little bit early to cover the morning session so we have more time to cover the evening session as well. And if you, if you may, I will start in just one minute. And if you have experience with meditation before, do share with me in the comment session. I would like to uh, discuss more with you how meditation has transformed your life as it is, does to mine. And today I'm going to talk about mindful living and abundant living. So as leaders, we have to live a personal life as well. As we lead, we are living. So how can we balance mindful living and abundant living to join them together. When we are happy, imagine your breath, it is even. When you are calm, imagine your breath, it is even. So when we learn the process of even breathing and calmness will arise from mindful practicing in meditation. So I would like to introduce myself briefly. My name is May. I'm the founder of Cosmic Citizens, one of the largest women empowerment platforms in China. And also at the same time, I call myself a bad vegan and good feminist. I'm a student and teacher at the same time in meditation because it's a long journey. I will be a long, a lifelong student. Actually, I've been practicing for six years. I see tremendous changes happening within me, my family, and even my team and my community of Cosmic Citizens University. So I'm very honored today here to share with you my thoughts on mindful leadership and guide you the mindful breathing that has changed my life and hundreds of leaders' lives all, all over the world with my journey. So let's go through about the first question. Let me ask you, why it is so important to be a mindful leader? Have you ever thought about it? Now, let me ask you, do you think you are a mindful leader? What is a mindful leadership? I think when I was younger, I admired the leadership like Madam Thatcher. But right now, I do believe in such a pandemic, a more mindful leadership style will embrace more. If you want to change the world like we all do as global leaders here at Harassis, try to change yourself first. If you want to change yourself, try to change your mind first. Excuse me. Now, if you're trying to change your mind and finally realize it is not that easy, giving up coffee in the morning or trying to think positively in your down moments, or maybe you just can't stop sabotage thoughts running in the background, or even try to stop thinking of a rumor about you, hearing from nowhere about you, or thinking of your ex, why is it so hard then to change your mind of thyself? Now you know how hard it is to change yourself. You will know how hard it is to change others. Then as leaders, we all realize that changes is the only thing that does not change. How can leaders lead well in such a turbulent time of changes in 2020 and in the coming 2021? If you want to change others, Lead. If you want to change others, change yourself from inside. If you want to lead others, lead yourself first. If you want to lead yourself, lead your mind first. So that is why we start the Horizons Asia Meeting 2020 with mindful breath 
and also end close with this mindful breath practice. This is the first time in 15 years we're doing this. Why? Because we realize for leaders is important more than ever. The mind is the reality. Being aware of thyself is the first step to be a mindful leader. And a science has already proven that meditation is probably the most effective way to learn self-awareness. Without self-awareness, as a leader, there's no mindful abundance in decision in leadership. So today, I am going to bring your roadmap to a mindful leader. So before I start, let's bring back the question again. Are you a mindful leader? Pause that question a bit, and then I ask you a second question. What do you think makes a mindful leader? What are the decisions you made make you mindful? So this is the first step I would like you to experience, to know the importance of self-awareness, to observe from inside, to calm down when you make important decisions. And now let's go to the second step. Let's pause and think a bit. Why breathing is so important? Because actually breath Breathing is the most important thing that you do as a human. It makes sense to focus on breathing more efficiently as a first step to live, to grow, and to lead more. Breathing is key to your ability to become more mindful, abundant, and magnificent as a true leader. So let's look at the breathing. Probably you've never looked at breathing in this way, but I would like to look at it from a science perspective. If you look at the way the lungs are shaped in the body, they're like triangles. They're bigger on the bottom and smaller on the top. If you ever pay attention to that. So you were designed in a way specifically to get the optimal amount of oxygen into your system every time you breathe. So your lungs, As a diaphragm pulls down, it creates a vacuum in your lungs, which pulls air in. And as it pushes up, it creates pressure in your lungs, which pushes carbon dioxide. Use the air that has had all the energy taken out of it out. This is the inhale and exhale process that all mammals and reptiles do. You do too. So inside your lungs, you have little bags called alveoli. When the air comes in, the sacs actually grab the oxygen molecules and take them into your bloodstream. From there, they go to your cells, which turn them into energy. So it's very interesting, though. Since I was young, people always tell me, man, you have so much energy. Where does it come from? As a kid, I don't know how to answer. Now I know. I know how to breathe. Well, interestingly, we've never learned how to breathe in school. Just as my uh, company, Cosmic Citizen University, we teach speed reading. I was thinking I've never learned speed reading in school. The traditional way of education, traditional leadership is out of date. We need to embrace a new way of living, breathing, leadership, everything. So today, now we learn that uh, Breathing is important. We learn that the lungs are actually bigger at the bottom. The bottom actually occupies about 50% of the oxygen capacity of your whole lung. This is where the biggest concentration of the alveoli is. So when does your brain have the most imagination and fertility? Give me the answer. And when is your body is healing and repairing itself? When you are at a sleep. So during this time, your brain is at most fertile and your imagination is most expansive. We've all had fantastic dreams where we could fly and do all kinds of crazy things we never do in reality. One reason for this high-level imagination is 
We have the ability to heal ourselves during this time, mainly because when we lay down, we automatically breathe using our diaphragm the right way. This means we're automatically giving ourselves more oxygen. You feel good. You relax. You calm down. You have more imagination. So imagine the beautiful moments in your life. Your breathing is always calm, nice, even. It is not uneven. It is in a rush. Imagine, breathing is represented in your leadership. So breathing is an essential component of life. Now, what do we do? We realize mindful mindfulness is important. We realize meditation is important, and breathing is where we start. And we have already practiced mindful breathing in the morning session. Start with gratitude, affirmation, and goal setting. I will leave this in the end of today's session if we have more time. And now, if you are ready, I would like to invite you to join me in this practice. Learning does not count when you just listen passively. Learning only starts when changes begin. So we take new actions. Now I would like to invite you to find a quiet, calm area. If you're by yourself, it is the best. Either in your study, in your office, in your bedroom, and find a nice chair to sit instead of a sofa. Because sofa, you will sit not straight. I would like to have your spine straight. When your spine is straight, you can just put your arms straight. Or just lay them on your laps is fine. Very relaxed, and you can put your feet on the ground. It doesn't matter. Or you can do Indian style. The most importantly, you relax. All right. So we got the position right. Or if you are with your family, invite them to join you. Why not? Right? It's a free session. And if you got ready, I want to ask you one question before we close our eyes. How will you feel when you have? Everything you want. What will you do with everything you already have? What will you do with your newfound bounty? Will you feel relieved and satisfied? Will you be excited and motivated? What will you do? Who will you help as a leader? What will you build? This is the question I want you to ask yourself as a mindful leader. I know we're facing all these turbulent times in pan in 2020 in the pandemic, but I want you to rebuild your mindful leadership again from inside, not from the achievements. Because as we all know, global leaders we've achieved it somehow here and there, but those does not last. The elements of abundant living are important. They are not achievements. They are not reputation. They are not fancy cars, big house. They are actually four elements that brings abundance to our lives: the air we breathe, the thoughts we think, the moves we make, the words we speak. So those four things. If you start to pay attention, you realize, wow, those are the things we'll be ignoring all the time. The air we breathe. I never thought about my lungs. The thoughts we think. We have sabotage thoughts all the time. The moves we make. We're always in a rush, going from the office to the house, driving mindlessly. The words we speak. When is the last time you talk so calmly and lovingly to your team, or to your family, or to your kids, to your? Other significant other, all those four elements, is the foundation of a mindful living and abundant living. It is a foundation to lead to mindful leadership. Think of those four elements. How are you dealing with these four elements? If you are ready, I would like you to continue to calm down, to relax. Still, we keep the eyes open. And if you're ready, I would like to invite you gently now, close your eyes, and gently breathe in through your nose, and breathe out through your mouth. When you breathe in, I'll step back so you can see. When you breathe in, you have your belly. 
getting bigger because your lungs is growing. And when you breathe out, your belly is going down. You can imagine there is a flower blooming when you breathe in and it fin、um, diminish when you breathe out. So we are closing our eyes. I would like to invite you to put a screen in your brain, in front of your eyes, while your eyes are closed. Look back on your life. If you were to describe yourself as a child from the age of five to fifteen, how would you describe yourself? You don't need to tell me, but you're gonna write down in your screen. For example, I would be written outgoing, bold. Hardworking, fearless, optimistic. Write it down. You know yourself better. And at those age, were you happy? Yes or no? I'm not quite sure. Probably yes. So write the questions to yourself, the answers to yourself. You don't need to share with anyone else, but be true to yourself. Now again, I invite you to breathe in through your nose. Breathe out through your mouth. How do you feel? You feel very calm, relaxed, soothing, right? That's the magic of mindful breathing. So now we are going through your childhood. Do you believe that you were a good kid? And this go from five to fifteen, fifteen to twenty-five. Do you believe that you're a good person and deserve the best? Yes. Write it down. And do you believe that you were likable and strong, or did you believe that there was something wrong with you, or you were too shy, you were not knowing how to present yourself? Doesn't matter. Go through that session. And when I was doing this exercise, I wrote it down. I was a born leader. I knew that. But I was very shy too, in some ways, because for me, as a Chinese girl living in a mountain, grew up in a village, people told me I had dark skin, not pretty enough. So that was all the thoughts we save in our subconsciousness. Those subconsciousness run when we sleep. Those subconsciousness influence our big decisions in life that we don't know. So. When you go through these questions, I want you to create integrity in yourself. To create integrity so strong that you have this mindful leadership comes from within. You're not really driven by results, by success. You're driven by being the best. Integrity. You want to create in your own identity. And now, if we have this integrity built from within, now I want you to dedicate yourself to breathe. I would like to invite you breathe in through your nose. Let's count five, four, three, two, one. Hold it, hold it, hold that breath as long as you can. Use your skill as a leader. Hold that breath above your head. Hold it and breathe out. <sighs> Let it out from your mouth. Five, four, three, two, one. How do you feel? Are you calm? Are you more relaxed? Are you full of gratitude with this life you're embracing? I believe you do. And now, when we are used to this mindful breathing technique, we can practice with our family members, with our team, with our communities. How to achieve that? Once you've mastered the very basic technique of mindful breathing, I can invite you to create a community. With your family, with your team, you can do collective mindful breathing, meaning you have one goal to achieve. For example, you want to celebrate a very good Christmas holiday with your family. You set one goal. You can sit around the Christmas tree, 
and you express gratitude towards each other. And then you invite everyone to breathe in and breathe out calmly and pray and express gratitude. And how to achieve collective mindfulness within a team? Same. You set a goal for the team, for one person, for the team leader, for the copywriter, or for a newcomer. You all breathe in, breathe out together with one goal. Let's pray for him or her that we have a fabulous three months in probation with your team. And when we breathe out. When people feel the power coming from within, they will love this community you build. Remember, as human, we feel the best when we connect with others. But how do we connect? It is not through our achievements. It's not through our titles, reputations. It is through our heart. Now, I would like to invite you to put both of your palm, your hands. On your sh- on your heart, feel your heartbeat. Breathe in through your nose. Breathe out through your mouth. Second time, breathe in through your nose. Breathe out through your mouth. Third time, breathe in through your nose. Breathe out through your mouth. Now, you have the foundation of mindful breathing. Now, I would like to invite you to breathe more mindfully. Imagine the first question I ask you: Are you a mindful leader? Imagine the mindful leader image in your screen, in front, in front of your brain, and breathe in more slowly. Breathe out more slowly, and hold your breath. In between, in your brain, above your head, let that energy go through your whole body. Let's do it again. Breathe in through your nose. 